Okay, so today I'm going to talk about something that all of you probably have in your hands, uh, in your backpacks, um, in your pockets, and you carry with you all the time, and you probably don't think too much about it unless you're worried about its battery running out, right? And that's this, mobile phone. But I want you to think about this. In 2011, 1.5 billion mobile phones were sold worldwide, and the average user upgrades their phone after only two years. Where do you think all those mobile phones went? Well, if people are like me, a lot of those phones are sitting in a drawer somewhere. The phones that you see behind you, for example, are in my junk drawer in my kitchen. Right? <clears throat> uh, two phones, an iPod Touch. So as a fraction, 50% of the mobile phones in my house and 100% of the iPod Touches in my house are sitting in a junk drawer. Right? <clears throat> now that's good, because they're not in a landfill. So I must feel somehow that these phones have some kind of value. But you know, sometimes we move, it's time to clean out that junk drawer. What am I going to do with those phones to dispose of them in a way which is environmentally responsible? Right now, there are two main options for the end of life of your disposed mobile phone or any electronics. Okay. The obvious one is to recycle it. So you take the phone, you crush it, uh, you extract its valuable raw materials. So these are things like glass, copper, chromium. And those materials go back into our industrial ecosystem to make new stuff. Okay. That's a great option. 100% of old phones should be recycled. But it turns out, in 2012, people projected that only 15% of old phones were going to end up uh, in the recycling stream. Okay? So clearly, I'm not the only one who has their own phones in their drawer. The second option is what's called refurbishing. So you take your phone to a business, and that business cleans up the phone, and they sell it to another consumer to use as a mobile phone. Now, this sounds like a really great option, because you would think that for every old phone that gets refurbished, that means one less new mobile phone has to be manufactured. But it turns out it's not the case. Experts believe that, only, that refurbishing mobile phones only decreases new phone production by about 5%. Okay. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but one of the main reasons is that the customer who tends to buy a refurbished mobile phone is usually a first-time mobile customer. And as soon as they can afford to, they're going to upgrade to a phone with the latest and greatest features. Now, the phones that go into drawers, most phones that go into drawers, aren't dead. Right? They still turn on, they have working speakers, microphones, displays, they have a microprocessor that runs software. So we asked, what if there was a third option? Instead of recycling or refurbishing the phone, what if we could repurpose it? Modify its hardware, modify its software a little bit so that it could replace some other uh, electronic device. Okay? Decrease the amount of manufacturing we have and maybe be beneficial for the environment. Now, why would we even ask this question in the first place? So I spend most of my time, or actually my graduate students spend most of their time, wor <laughs> worrying about uh, the power consumption of what's behind me here. This is an integrated circuit or a computer chip. Uh, and the reason we want to decrease the power consumption is to make you know, electronics smaller and lighter, make your battery last longer. Uh, and these are all kind of important problems. Um, <clears throat> but after we worked on this for a while, we suddenly had one of those sort of uh-oh realizations. right? What if we reduce the power consumption of our chips so much that it actually takes more energy to make the chip than the chip uses during its typical operating life. Right? <clears throat> so to, uh, to answer this question, we had my graduate student, they do all the work, John Oliver, uh, and my colleagues, Venkatesh Akella, Fred Chong, and Roland Geyer, we looked into this uh, several years ago, and the results of our analysis are here. <clears throat> so it turns out, for the type of chip that you typically see in a mobile phone, it takes 60 times more energy to make the chip in the first place than the chip uses during its typical two to three year operating life. Okay. Now, if you're worried about decreasing the power consumption of integrated circuits, this is kind of a depressing result. Right? We're working on that tiny little sliver, right? <laughs> and it takes all that big box to make the chip in the first place. Okay. But instead of getting depressed, I, I sort of realized that this is not really a fair comparison. Right? That chip would not exist in the first place if we didn't first invest the energy it takes to manufacture it. That energy is what an economist would call a sunk cost. You can't get it back. And people get a lot of utility out of decreasing the power consumption of their chips, right? Smaller electronics, longer battery life. Uh, so my students still work on that problem. But we wanted to figure out, is there a way we can get more return for that initial investment of manufacturing energy? Okay, and when you think about a phone, instead of one chip, there's usually six to 10 chips like that. So the investment of energy uh, is that much higher. Um, at first, we looked at, you know, can we just disassemble the phone, take the chips out, and use them again in other places? 
Uh, and it turns out that it may not make a lot of economic sense because of the time and labor involved in doing the disassembly process. So instead of reusing the chips, we thought about reusing the entire phone itself. And we tried to think about what kind of device could an old mobile phone completely replace in terms of its functionality. Okay, and the one we looked at replacing is the one on the left here. This little thing is an electronic parking tag. It's a really simple device. What you do is you take your phone or credit card, you charge it up with minutes. Then when you park your car in a metered spot, you hang this tag out or put it on the dashboard. It starts off a little countdown timer with a display. And then when the parking attendant comes by, they look to see if your time's expired and you get a ticket or you don't or whatever. Okay, so really simple functionality. So instead of building a new specific device to do this, I had my student Frank Maker create that prototype on the right. Okay. It's using an old Nokia N80 phone. He wrote a little app that basically does all the functions of the electronic parking tag. And you'll notice, you'll notice it also has uh, something extra. It's got this little solar panel attached to the side okay, with some electronics on a prototyping board to convert the solar panel voltage to something the phone likes. Why is that there? Well, I'm sure you all know, what's the first thing to go bad on your mobile phone? It's the battery. And if you are thinking about repurposing your mobile phone to do something else, you may want to think about replacing that battery with a different kind of power supply. OK, so here's a picture of that uh, prototype being used as an electronic parking tag on the dashboard of, of Frank's car. Um, in the inset, you can see a little screenshot from his app. It all works just fine. Uh, it doesn't look very pretty, I grant you that. But on the other hand, it's pretty obvious that you can easily optimize the hardware, the software, the packaging to make it look good and make it look like something you'd be happy to have on the dashboard of your car. But the question is, now that we went to all this trouble of repurposing this old phone, have we actually done anything to benefit the environment? And to do that, we worked with some folks who are experts in what's called industrial ecology to do a life cycle analysis and to see what the global uh, impacts you know, for the environment are of doing this uh, repurposing. Trevor Zink from the University of California, Santa Barbara, helped us with this. And here's the results of his study, or our study. <clears throat> So it turns out that, say, example, uh, for example, you're looking at global warming. If you repurpose the, electronic, repurpose the phone as an electronic parking tag, you can result in a net decrease in global warming, whereas if you simply refurbish the phone and use it again as a phone, it actually contributes to an increase in global warming, okay? <clears throat> once you account for all of the different impacts of components and, and so on. And we looked at two options, so the two bars on the top. Uh, one corresponds to using the phone as a parking tag with a solar panel the other to using it uh, as a parking tag with a battery. And both those options are better than refurbishing, which you would e expect. Um, <clears throat> but it turns out that using it with a battery is actually better than using it with a solar panel. Right, now, why is that? The reason is because you have to account for the energy it took to make the solar panel. Uh, if that solar panel had been reclaimed from another product or another waste stream, then the results of the analysis would flip. It would make more sense to use the repurposed phone with the solar panel than the battery. Now, this is kind of a really important point. Whenever we're thinking about the environmental impact of our industrial production, like with electronics, the context is everything. So, for example, the size of those bars, the contribution to global warming, doesn't just depend on what you're doing with that phone or with that repurposed phone. It depends on where the charger is plugged in. So, for example, your phone's running off a battery um, as a parking tag. If you plug that phone in and recharge it in California, where a lot of our grid electricity comes from renewable sources, that contributes a lot less to global warming than if you took the same parking tag and plugged it in somewhere like China, where a lot of the electricity comes from coal-fired power plants, say. <clears throat> and in fact, what may matter more even than what you do with that phone or that repurposed phone is actually what you do with the charger. So let's say um, you've got your phone repurposed as a parking tag, you're gonna charge it up before you go to campus and, and put it on your dashboard. If you leave the charger plugged in, you take your phone out, <clears throat> uh, go to campus, what that charger does is it takes energy from the grid and transfers it to the battery of the phone. Okay? But it takes a little bit for itself every time it does that. And when you disconnect the phone from the charger, that charger doesn't stop taking energy for itself. It's still gonna use some energy from the grid. And if you leave that charger plugged in for about, say, 20% of the time you're using that repurposed phone as a parking tag, the charger is taking more energy than it's transferring to the phone. <clears throat> context. So where do we go from here? We've looked at repurposing mobile phone to do uh, other 
uh, do the tasks of other electronic devices. It looks like it's going to help the environment in some ways. Um, how do we think about making that happen or making it easier? Well, for inspiration, we can look at this. Okay. <clears throat> no joke, uh, this is my daughter's big girl bed. Okay. Uh, she's almost five. You might not be able to tell, she kind of likes Hello Kitty. Um, <clears throat> but the reason I, I want to show this is because this bed used to be her crib, her baby crib. Right. You can see that the headboard and the footboard were the sides of the crib. Now, the company that designed and manufactured the crib did it in such a way that the consumer could basically take the crib apart with just some Allen wrenches, and they sold a conversion kit that let us take that crib and scale it up to a full-size bed. Right? It means one less bed has to be manufactured. And in terms of impact on the environment, we would expect that to be, again, a net win. So the folks who design mobile phones and other electronics, they ought to be thinking like the folks who design baby cribs and building the phones and designing them in such a way that it makes it easy, either for the consumer or maybe for a business, to convert the phones to another type of use and decrease the environmental footprint of our electronics on our environment. So the next time you upgrade your phone, and you're about to put that old phone uh, in a drawer, stop and ask yourself, you know, what could this old phone be now that I don't need it to be a phone anymore? Okay. Oh, but first, Go home and unplug all your chargers. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.